Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. <laughs> It's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with amazing physical powers far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, wages a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Today, with Superman unaware of their predicament, Mr. Jones points a gun at Batman and Robin, who are chained to the wall in an ancient prison barracks. Any last requests, gentlemen? Yeah, Mr. Jones. I'd like to see you drop dead. Amen to that. That is just what I'm about to arrange for you to do. Right now. All right, gang, get set now for more Superman contest winners. You may be among these, so listen carefully. Jimmy Peabody, Springfield, Missouri, Alan Weitzenfeld, Chicago, Larry Nanosmith, Wellman, Iowa, Janet Christensen, Saratoga Springs, New York, Gwen Johnson, Haverford, Pennsylvania, Robert Orr, Manchester, Connecticut, Robert Maxson, Kendall, New York, Daniel Gilmore, Akushnet, Massachusetts, Carolyn Waring, Leavenworth, Kansas, Philip Gaswaldo, Newark, New Jersey, John Salzburg, Plymouth, Pennsylvania, Karen Clendinen, Bayport, Long Island, Kenneth Robinson, Philadelphia, James Williams, Van Buren, Arkansas, Annie Ludemilk, Tacoa, Georgia, Charles Sell, Ponca City, Oklahoma, Grace Schrammick, Berwyn, Illinois, Marlene Boyd, Norfolk, Virginia, Laniel Cunningham, Pendleton, Oregon, uh, Carolyn Shry, Chicago, Millard Amdur, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Bobby Mern, Belmore, Long Island, Barbara Stone, Berea, Kentucky, Robert Crawl, Staten Island, New York, Inga Pronk, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jane McCann, Big Stone Gap, Virginia, John Nichols, Bonham, Texas, Raymond Hagenau, Manchester, Connecticut, Philip Rosenthal, Miami Beach, Florida, Barry Spiegel, Inglewood, California, Michael Kowalski, Detroit, Leono, Leona, rather, Koenig, Webster, South Dakota, Wayne Shepard, Poplar Bluff, Missouri, H.A. Cotton, Lewiston, Maine, Johnny Wickman, Van Buren, Arkansas, Graham Fodry, Norfolk, Virginia, Everett Harris, Patchogue, Long Island, Nellie Montrose, Lorena, Texas, Eddie Beige, Kew Garden, New York, Nancy Jean Ellis, Memphis, Tennessee, Beverly Kujawa, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Gail Biddle, Cincinnati, Ohio, Tom Gifford, Dubuque, Iowa, Ruth Johnson, Augusta, Maine, Arlene Cohen, Dorchester, Massachusetts, Bill Carson, Appomattox, Virginia, Eugene Steinhardt, Brooklyn, New York, Toby Stein, Chicago, Donald Williams, West Reading, Pennsylvania, and Kenneth Vetter, Omaha, Nebraska. That's all for now. More later in the program, so be sure to keep listening. Now, the adventures of Superman. While a man who called himself Mr. Jones held the famous Batman prisoner, another man impersonated Superman's friend. And after making a series of un-American public speeches, led Robin, Batman's young companion, into an ambush. Meanwhile, Superman had discovered a recording of the mysterious Mr. Jones' voice, which Batman had left behind him. And certain that Jones was an alias for some professional rabble-rouser, he had duplicates of the recording made and arranged for them to be broadcast over radio stations throughout the country, offering $10,000 to whoever could identify the man who called himself Jones. As we continue now, Superman in his guise of reporter Clark Kent has been notified that a man who claimed he could identify Jones's voice had arrived at the Daily Planet radio station. At the station, Kent is directed to the manager's office, where a middle-aged, weather-beaten man with shrewd, faded blue eyes sits on the edge of a chair, a battered old hat on his knees. Hello, my name is Kent, Clark Kent. Uh, how do you do? My name's Hempel, William Hempel. Well, Mr. Hempel, I understand you can identify the man whose voice we've been broadcasting. Yep. Fine. Who is he? Not so fast, young man. Fellow oh. said on the radio I get $10,000 if I tell you who belongs to that voice. Well, that's right. So I ain't saying nothing till I see the money. But you get the money, Mr. Hempel. After all, the offer is made by the Daily Planet, the largest newspaper in Metropolis, and we'll pay off. Just tell me who owns that voice so I can go after him. There are two lives at stake. Well, uh, we... maybe so, but I want to see that Oh, no, maybe it's about it. Believe me. Now, if you really know whose voice that is on the recording, in the name of heaven, tell me. Like I said before, young Philip, I'll tell you when I see the $10,000. But great Scott, I, I told, told you. you no good to get hot under the collar, neither. I know my rights. All right, all right. You stay right here. I'll get out of the cash here and have a check drawn. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Hempel, 
here's the check. Drawn to your order. Fine. Let's have it. No, no, no. no I'll hold it, if you don't mind, until you've identified the voice. If you can. I can. Feller owns that voice is Mort Beeler. Now give me the check. Just a minute. Who's Mort Beeler? Feller rides round out in the country making speeches again what he calls foreigners and saying for us not to ha- send no help to the starving folks in Europe. Great Scott, I think you've hit it. That's the man I heard once way up in Maine. Yes, now I recall it is his voice on the recording. Sure it is. Give me my check. Here you are, Mr. Hempel. Much obliged. <laughs> Easiest money I ever made in my life. Wait a minute. Tell me, do you know where this Mort Beeler is now? Didn't say on the radio. I had to say that. Oh, you don't. But I've got to find this man quickly because he's holding a man and a boy prisoners. As a matter of fact, it may already be too late to save their lives. Mm, is that a fact? Yes. Huh? And if you could help me find this Beeler quickly... Hey, maybe I can at that. And you do know where he is? I don't know for sure. But this Beeler, he's got some kind of society. Yes? Calls it uh, no help for Europe or nothing for foreigners. I don't recollect just exactly what. That's important. Try to remember, please. Yeah, can't seem to... Never paid no attention. Gun, I don't hold with fellas like him. They're always trying to stir up bad feelings. Think good. That's right. Now, if you can remember the name of his outfit, I, I can trace yeah, him and then... I can't. Come to think of it, though, the name and the address, too, is on his envelopes. Oh? Once he sends out the folks asking for contributions. Wonderful. Do you have one of them? Yeah, seems to me I should have. I always keep envelopes to figure my taxes on. Things buying paper. God, can you let me have one of them right away? Well, they're home, up on the farm. It's just below Mayfield, about 90 miles up steep. Only 90 miles? We can be there in a minute or two. Come on, Mr. Hempel. We'll be there in a minute or two. You know what you're saying, young fella? Huh? Oh, uh, uh well, I, 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 that is... Look, Mr. Hempel, you, you've heard of Superman, haven't you? Yep. Sure well, he's a friend of the people whom Mort Beeler abducted. Yeah. And he's here in this building right now. Yeah? Well, uh, you're joking. No, I'm not. You wait right here. I'll see that Superman joins you in a few seconds. Hello, Mr. Hempel. He's, who, who be you? I'm Superman. You ready for a quick trip up to your farm? Uh, you really Superman? I certainly am. I just open this window. Well, I'll be. There we are. Now, up with you, Mr. Hey, Hempel. Wait, 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 wait. Put me down. What you aiming to do? Give you the ride of your life, old-timer. Now, don't be frightened. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Have you found that envelope yet, Mr. Hempel? Uh, can't seem to lay my hands on them Mort Beeler things. Superman must have thrown them away. But you said they were here in your house. Well, they was, I know, because I've been scribbling on them. Well, I'll help you look. We must find them, Mr. Hempel. We must. As Superman and Farmer Hempel search for the envelopes bearing Mort Beeler's address, Beeler himself and his alias of Mr. Jones stands in the ancient prison block where Batman and Robin are chained by leg shackles to the wall. Pointing a revolver at them, he smiles sardonically. Once again, gentlemen, I'll ask you any last requests. Yes, Jones. I have. Really? What is it, that man? I, uh, I, I'd like a last cigarette. Cigarette? That's when do you smoke, Batman? Well, I, I don't much, but, well, in a, in a tight spot, I, well, I sort of like a cigarette. You do, eh? Well, I don't know. Now, look, Jones, you took my name, my fortune, and now you're going to take my life. A last cigarette isn't too much to ask in return, is it? <laughs> Under the circumstances, yes, I think you are entitled to a last cigarette. Thanks. Would you give me one, please? I have none because I only smoke cigars, but I know some of the boys have cigarettes. I'll send one in, and I'll give you ten minutes to enjoy it. Then, well, you know what happens then. Yes. Yes, I know. I'll see you both again in exactly ten minutes. Look, Batman, what was the idea of asking for a cigarette? You never smoked. Now, wake up, Robin. Jones said he's going to send somebody in here, didn't he? Yeah, so what? So we're going to make a last stab for our lives, that's what. How? What good is... I'm going to try to coax Jones's playmate close enough for us to grab him. Then I'll take his gun and shoot our chains off, and then... And then we go to town. Oh, boy, that man... Quiet, quiet. Don't let him hear you. This is a long chance, and... Get ready. Here comes somebody. Straining tensely against their chains, Batman and Robin stare toward the door at the end of the long, low room through which a burly man is advancing. What will happen? We'll be back in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode, so keep listening. 
Stand by now for more contest winners. Here they are. Janet May, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Lawrence Levitt, New York City. Leroy Schleiger, Berthoud, Colorado. Donald Fowler, Atlanta, Georgia. Charles Carter, Independence, Missouri. Jerry Kafka, New Brighton, Minnesota. John Gaynor, Delmar, New York. David Pollitt, New Canaan, Connecticut. Martha Fierce, St. Helena, California. Todd Cameron, New York City. Lily Ackwright, Battlesville, Oklahoma. Ian Bakes, Straw, Concordville, Pennsylvania. James Bengal, Parsonburg, Maryland. John Mudge, Casper, Wyoming. John Lotzko, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Nancy Chambers, to Kenneman, Pennsylvania. Phil Koblenz, Vienna, Virginia. Arlene Cott, Danbury, Connecticut. Raymond Mandarelli, Providence, Rhode Island. S. Edwards, Riverdale, Maryland. John Porter, Sherman, Texas. Don Fullerton, Valley Springs, Arkansas, Carol Zimmering, Philadelphia, William Early, Rockville, Indiana, Hope Rogers, Chicago. Billy Mitchell, Skippers, Virginia, Joseph Lohr, Hannibal, Missouri, Carol Baker, Shoshomish, Washington, Leanne uh, Butner, San Diego, California, Cheryl Bartnick, Prairie de Sac, Wisconsin, Sharon Barth, Camby, Oregon, Patricia McDermott, La Mesa, California, Betty Greenfield, Bronx, New York, Jerry Patterson, Wheaton, Illinois, Homer Irwin, Sudburn, Oregon, Shirley Miller, Iron Mountain, Michigan, Al Woodbroska, Aberdeen, South Dakota, James Malin, State Center, Iowa, Nancy Russell, Oklahoma City, Jackie Thompson, Tucum, Cary, New Mexico, Bobby Case, Jackson, Mississippi, Philip Haberman, Brooklyn, New York, Mary Davis, Mellon, Wisconsin, Philip Toman, Wilmington, Delaware, John Givens, Laredo, Texas, Rusty Tillman, St. Paul, Minnesota, Roger Conley, Lindbrook, New York, Rose Dominguez, Bayonne, New Jersey, Sandra Rotmer, Providence, Rhode Island, and Bob Shosher, Brighton, Colorado. And that gang winds up the Superman Hidden Word Contest. To the 1,000 of you who won, our heartiest congratulations. To those of you who didn't, our best wishes for better luck next time. To all of you who entered the contest, our very sincere thanks. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. In their ancient prison, chained to heavy beams in the wall, Batman and Robin tense their muscles as a burly, unshaven giant of a man approaches. A package of cigarettes in a huge, ham-like hand. Hey, it's pretty big, Batman. The bigger they are, Robin, the harder they fall. Now get set. You got a cigarette for me, buddy? Yeah. Here's one. Catch. Thanks. A match? I told you, Pack. Yeah. Oh, shucks, I missed it. But if I need... Uh, look, I, I, I can't quite reach the matches, buddy. Would you mind picking them up for me, please? Uh, okay. Now, Robin, come to pilot. <laughs> I got my hand over his mouth. I got his feet. Put him to sleep, fat man. Good idea. Good night, sweetheart. Yeah, that does it. What good, Pappy? Quick, now help me to throw his pockets for his gun. Check. Hey, I can't find a gun. Neither can I. What's going on in here? Uh-oh, it's Jonesy. What will we do? Well, there's nothing we can do now, Robin. This is it. The last chance gone. Batman and Robin see Mr. Jones draw his revolver and level it at them. Is this the end for Superman's great friends, Batman and Robin? Serious as it seems, there is still a chance for the dynamic duo. So don't fail to be with us on Monday when further surprising and thrilling things occur. Yes, be sure to tune in again on Monday, same time, same station, for Chapter 10 of Batman's Great Mystery on The Adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC Comics Magazine and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time. This program came from New York. Stay tuned to your mutual station for Captain Midnight, which follows in just a moment. And right after Captain Midnight, you will hear Tom Mix and his Ralston Straight Shooters. This is a mutual broadcasting...